listener. It is time once again for NH Unscripted, where we get out of bed and ask the question every day. Will you be staying after Sunday or be going home on Monday? Yes, that means I am your mamas and papas like host, Ray Dudley. And we are coming to you proudly from the YMCA like digs, the WKXL studios in Concord. Pull out your transistor radios. You know what that means. It's time to flip on over to 1450 AM, 103.9 FM in Concord. 101.9 FM for the beautiful souls in Manchester. I'm the one wearing the platform shoes, the Nehru jacket. Got my pendant out. My uh, bell-bottom pants. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Where are we going to go today? Oh, I need to thank my sponsor before we go too far. Uh, Lakes Region Fence. All right. My friends, I'm going to be honest with you. You have to lose your emotional attachment to certain things. We had to with Grandma. You know, certain decrepit, falling apart things that are just decaying. You got to let them go. We had to. We said bye to Grandma. Yeah, take a look at your fence. You're gonna, your neighbors are complaining already about it. LRFence.com is the place you want to go. LRFence.com. They have reams and reams and reams and gigabytes, as the kids would say, of photos out there of options that you can choose from. There's a button out there where you can even get a free quote. Yep, free quote. Pass that around the home. People love free things there. We love Jello. We love applesauce. We love it all. Mashed bananas. Free quote. Matt McGonigal up there, Lakes Region Fence in Guilford. They do exemplary work. I have been on their job sites several times and I'm proud to have them as a sponsor. Yep, yep, yep. You're going to be the talk of the neighborhood. Trust me, LRFence.com is their URL. You'll be very happy that you did it. Thank you, Matt. We appreciate all you've done for us. In the house today is my co-pilot. Mr. Jim Rosenberg for a visit, a return visit. Co-pilot. I feel like that's a significant promotion over my standing on prior appearances. It's been a long time, but it's so good to see you. It was like a reunion when I walked into the WKXL studio this morning for you and your crew. We meant to have the confetti drop, but you know, we didn't fill it in time. Yeah. Well, there was a lot of talk as I walked in about the facial hair of the people Uh, who work here. Yeah. What's going on? I mean, too bad the show today is on the radio, folks, because the Ray Dudley I'm looking at is sporting a glorious Thank goatee. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Has that been part of your repertoire in years past, or is this a new addition to your look, style, and fashion? So, uh, I'm, great segue, Jim. That's why you're here. So, I am performing currently up at Gene's Playhouse in Lincoln. We are doing Misery. Uh, we opened last weekend. Uh, we have this n- weekend coming up. And um, I'm playing Sheriff Buster. And so, as part of my wardrobe-ish kind of thing. They asked me if I would grow some facial hair. They gave me about two weeks' notice. This is the best I can do, no matter how hard I like go. Well, I mean, this is so much better an assignment as a thespian than if they told someone like me, we're going to have to have you lose weight for this role. Yeah, that would have been tougher you for know, me, too. So, uh, <laughs> I well, so I'm not, I wasn't talking about you. I, I wasn't trying to pivot it. and project. No, sir, I'm, I'm just saying. It. So tell us about that Misery is the Stephen King it play. Is. It is. Yes, sir. And that's the famous one where in the movie... Kathy Bates hobbles yes. the guy. Is James that right? Con, yes. Okay, so if you could place us for a moment, you're you're Sheriff Buster. I am. And how 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 significant or modest a role is that? I mean, are you stealing the show? Top of the playbill. You could get discovered. Well, uh, I'll have to find someone else to serve with here at WKXL. What's our story? All of the above. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I will steal the show anytime they put me on stage. It's always going to be a hazard. Um, but actually, he's more like uh, he's more like Columbo. They, you know, he's written in that way as kind of this country bumpkinish kind of sheriff who stumbles onto what's really happening up there. And it's dark. I mean, the play is dark. It's as dark as the movie. And uh, it it's about a two hour show. Um, and we it. There's blood. There is ankle hobbling. You remember the scene where absolutely she hits I, his ankles f- with the sledgehammer? Yeah, it happens right there on stage. I mean, it's pretty darn impressive. 
it's one one uh, set, and uh, it's just and so he's used more or less kind of like that. Oh, you, I have one more thing to ask you, kind of thing. You yeah, know? yeah. Ah, oh, shucks. Yeah, coming at the investigation sideways with that quintessential New England vibe that Stephen King weaves yes. into all of his work. Yeah, dude, his mind has got to be dark. So I you're though a it. hero in an otherwise dark story. I mean, you're yes. sincerely trying to unravel the mystery of the misery yeah. that's taking place. Absolutely, absolutely, and. I mean, in a way, he's also kind of the comic relief in that it gets so dark. I mean, she's doing things to him that, and, and you can't have that much, that much darkness straight through the play. You got to break it up at some point. And so they do the playwright, uh, which is not Stephen King. Um, uh, he just the playwright kind of adapted it. Um, so he uses the sheriff as this kind of break to stop things in their tracks periodically. Because you just go crazy just watching this. I mean, she everything. In, in who's responsible for this production? Is there a production company? No, that, Gene's Playhouse up there. Yeah. Okay, so Gene's yeah. Playhouse has a staff of people putting on yep. play after play. Now, did they think of you and recruit recruit you, or did you go up there to compete against others who Dude, wish for this role? I am going to kiss you on the lips. This guy is brilliant. Again, too bad this is a radio <laughs> show, not TV. I'm sure your listeners <laughs> yeah. would love to see that. Exactly. Exactly. No. Uh, Joel uh, Mercier, uh, who's the artistic director up there, is a very good friend of mine. And so a lot of times uh, when they need, let's say, an older, maybe maybe heftier kind of individual, he gives me a call. So I, I would play the uh, Wizard and the Wizard of Oz last year. Sure. And, you know, so I kind of fall into those uh, standardized roles. So you've appeared up there before. How long? I've never been to Gene's Playhouse. What? And I mean, I, as you know from our conversations in radio show past, I pride myself on some, some at least modest level of local tidbits oh of places to go and destinations near and far in our region. Lincoln, what a beautiful town. Easy to get to, just a trip up 93 That's North it. to exit 32. That's it. It's and literally an hour from my doorstep to the front door of their awesome. playhouse. Awesome, awesome. How long, do you have any sense how long Gene's Playhouse has been oh operational? My gosh, well, it used to be called the Paper Mill Theater. Yep. And uh, then the Paper Mill, because there was a paper mill up there, and um, so they named it after that. And then it switched over to Gene's. I don't know the year. I mean, we do a, a, a Halloween thing in um, October called Ghost Light where we kind of talk about the history of the uh, paper mill theater and then how it became jeans and how it's potentially uh, haunted, you know, by previous... So this is an antique setting to host a production like this. Oh, it's an older-looking playhouse. Well, it's, it looks brand new. Yeah. No, no, it, it's not at all. Have you the river? Have you seen the Riverwalk uh, uh, Hotel? Oh, I can't say that I have. Also in Lincoln? Yes. No, it, I haven't. It's I like used the to, Mount in Washington past, Resort. My, my wife and I used to go up to Off Exit uh, 32 back in our younger days to camp in the great, uh, I think, state or maybe federal campgrounds that dot the Kankamangas Highway. If yes. you continue on yes. past Lincoln. And I've skied at Loon or on a rare case mountain bike there, which is a separate story in and of itself. But it's been a minute since I've been up there and sometimes steer clear of our friends from the south of our southern border who love to uh, populate that neck of the woods this time of year. So, well, they're in uh, plenty uh, right now. There's plenty of them up there, let me tell you. Well, when are you? when is this production going off? I mean, are you guys in the kind of heat of getting ready, practicing, and doing your rehearsals? We opened last weekend. Oh, so you are off to the races. We how are. How long does Misery run for up there at Jeans? Uh, about two hours, with uh, a little over two hours with an intermission. In, in the schedule of events, how long into, is this going to go into the fall? One more weekend coming up. Oh, man. So yep. everyone out this there it. You want to see the face behind the microphone. You, you got you to get up there to Gene's Playhouse Correct. to see our very own with, Ray Dudley. With my facial hair. Yeah, fantastic. How has it been received? I mean, is it uh, uh, the type of production that receives any yeah. critical acclaim and attention? Are there people up there reviewing and reporting out about what they're seeing among Dude, you, you and your fellow thespians? You need your own show. This guy's incredible. Well, okay. I, I prefer to be on your <laughs> show <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> so the whole area up there um they wrestle a little bit with it's all transient people 
in a good way. I mean, they're they're campers, they're hikers, they're you know people who just want to get up and, and and leaf peep and all that kind of stuff. So it's very difficult to tie down the demographic, and so from play to play, like they did. Uh, a uh, little shop of horrors this year. Fun one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you, oh man. Okay, hang on to that thought. Yeah. Put a pin in it, man. We are out of the starting gate. You shoot right up. Got Jim a roll. Rosenberg is in the house. You are listening to NH Unscripted. I am your happy to be out of bed host, Ray Dudley. We are coming to you from the Taj Mahal like digs of the WKXL Studios. Man, it's cavernous in here. 1450 AM, 103.9 FM. Those are Concord based. 101.9 FM in Manchester. I'm going to switch the tables here shortly and ask him some questions, but we'll be right back. I'm ready. We'll be right back. is making you lonely, you can always go, you know, to NH Unscripted. I am your particular clock-like host, Ray Dudley, having a heck of a lot of fun today. Uh, we are coming to you from the gong show-like digs of WKXL Studios in Concord, 1450 AM, 103.9 FM, both on your transistor radio in Concord, 101.9 FM. For the beautiful souls in Manchester, Jim Rosenberg and I are chatting away. So I was telling you, dude, one of the great things about this is I get to die on stage. Well, and I just feel like you did a major reveal to your oh, robust alert. listening audience. I mean, I'm concerned that no one could, you know, deal with in stomach seeing you pass on stage. You know, is I that going to thwart attendance? I know, I know. Well, what a challenge. And there's blood everywhere. Well, I mean, most of us don't wish to and rarely, well, I tried to stay away from thoughts on a daily basis of my own mortality. And I suppose if you're preparing as you must for a production – of this level, you have to confront some of that stuff, right? Like, you, it's a serious show. You're trying to feign it a is. sincere death. Yes. Yes. She shoots me with a shotgun. Oh, man. So how do you get in that mindset? <laughs> I told you it's a dark play. It's a dark play. You know, I go through all my albums, see all my past relatives, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's not as hard as it might seem. <laughs> Thanks for getting me out of this mess. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. Exactly right. Anyway, hey, I got something for you, too. I brought you a present today. You know, I do periodically. Oh, we're back to gift giving, and I failed well, you again. I've come you. back I've to our seen... very first visit. I didn't bring anything for you at all. That's, Shameful. That's okay. I know better after a few trips to the show. Well, you know the budget here. It's unending. You know, it's very deep. And so <laughs> we were talking about the condition of the road out front that leads up to WKXL we Studios. Were. Someone we were. somewhere might be listening. Yeah, there's a few people probably in the potholes out there as we speak. Um, have you been to Wayfarer Coffee? I have not. You have not? No. What? Where is it located? Oh, my God. There's one in Laconia. Mm-hmm. And I don't, I don't know. Is there one in Concord? There might be two in Laconia. There's um, one at the Lakeport and there's one in downtown. Sure. I don't know. But anyway, they make what these. What do we have here? Uh, they're kind of some kind of a, I think they call them energy bites oh, or something. Oh, man. These they're about look the size amazing. of a golf ball. They're made with dates and Well, Ray has just handed to me three chocolate and three cranberry energy bites. So we need to we need to pause right there. I bought three chocolate and three cranberry. <laughs> <laughs> There's not six in there. Oh, so does that mean that someone may have uh, been unable to help themselves <laughs> and dipped into the very were, gift? How would I know they weren't poisoned? <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for saving me. I wouldn't want to suffer the same fate you do on stage up at Gene's Playhouse during Misery. Correct. I correct. appreciate being, if I ever need a taste tester, you're my man. Thank you. Well, I knew you were biking in and you might need some energy. I was. I was, I was. I biked in today on my e-bike. We've talked about it in the past. We I have. continue to commit on days I 
can when I don't have court or I don't have some other obligation after work I got to be in my wheels to get to. Yeah. I've been riding my bike, which has been glorious. Our our local infrastructure, though, they've tried as they have rebuilt downtown in our main street to establish meaningful bike lanes. Yes. Um, it's not everywhere. It starts and stops. So I think Concord has made a sincere beginning toward this. And I hope for all those committed as I have become toward advocating for better infrastructure infrastructure yeah. for pedestrians yeah. and bikers. They think about that. As I've shared with you on shows past, I got into this. And again, I'm on a pedal assist e-bike. I don't want to overstate my athletic accomplishment here. But I got into this on a few trips abroad to Europe, to Copenhagen and to Amsterdam before that, where I'm actually returning again shortly. I was going to ask you. rented on my list e-bikes of with friends and the infrastructure for doing so is magnificent. You feel uh, immediate confidence among all of the throngs of cyclists there, and it's the primary way of getting to and from, and I've mm. tried to mm. do it here as much as I can, but thank you for telling me about Jeans. I was um, Jeans Playhouse in your uh, appearance in Misery, a Stephen King show. I visited my dad and his girlfriend, who presently lived during the summer months in Midcoast, Maine, in a town called Stockton Springs, and it is way up there. I mean, you go to Rockland, and then you can continue going. For those that know the Samoset Resort, which is an absolutely wonderful resort right on the ocean in Midcoast, Maine, it's got an absolutely breathtaking golf course, signature hole after signature hole really? with stunning views out to the mighty Atlantic. It's past that by an hour, so it's oh. up there and just before Acadia. That's where my dad lives, and their place is perched on a cliff overlooking the ocean. It's a stunning place to be, but not knowing where to stay, my my wife and I just went north of that even to Bucksport. Have you heard Bucksport? No, sir, I have not. I believe it's Bucksport. In there, there's a small local graveyard. And um, um, when it rains, there's this image of a hand that shows up on one of the headstones there. And it's got this very Stephen King vibe there and throughout the town. And we stayed in this old inn right on the water and while it was clean and tidy we felt like we're the only souls there and it looked like you were walking you know three four five decades into history Ooh. and it really had this Stephen King vibe and I love that New England's underbelly and some of these yeah, small towns and hamlets you. have this um, unique um, cool maybe occasionally a little eerie feel to it and I'm pleased to see that our yeah. local playhouses are continuing um, with uh, you know Stephen King's rich history and gift to our area. Yeah man it is really really it's impressive. Um, you asked me about the audiences and I'm telling you they love it. The people who show up love it um, because it's dark you know it's, it's not a lighthearted comedy and there's not a lot of shows that that go into that uh, area you know um, well, Sweeney Todd, kind of, Sweeney Todd is Andrew. You would you would vouch for Sweeney Todd, would you not, sir? As being a somewhat dark. So that's currently somewhat on dark. Broadway, right? Yeah. Sweeney yeah. Todd's on Broadway. Josh yeah. Groban was in it. Yeah, and yeah, now it's Aaron Tivit. Tivit. Don't know him. You know, I was. I'm he was going... in. Um, oh my gosh, what was the show? Um, Moulin Rouge, Ooh, which is also right on Broadway right now, isn't it? Um. I think so. I, I was looking around for possible plays because this weekend I'm going down with another couple, Diane and Mark Siborowski, along with my beautiful wife, Shannon, are headed yeah. together for Labor Day weekend in New York City. Really? To finish the season strong. We were considering a show and we were uh, looking around. One that seems like a hit right now is Mary. Have you heard oh, about this? Uh, I saw uh, satire and comedy email. about the weeks leading up to President Lincoln's death and Mary's role. Um, and I don't know much more about it other than it's received real critical claim. Nothing, yeah. I'm sure, like misery at Jean's Playhouse in Lincoln, but it's really received from critical acclaim. Yeah. There was another one we were interested in called Six. And then the outsiders. Oh, that's the six women. Right? Yes, in the six wives of King someone Henry the Eighth. Am yeah, I correct maybe. in that? I think you are. Your knowledge is better than mine. But it also seemed like it took a contemporary funny edge on a dark, yeah. historic series of stories. But I don't know because I haven't seen it. I was just trying to look around. And then we were considering the outsiders as well. But if the weather's good, we might not hit the theater at all. We mm. might just enjoy what what the city has to offer. Yeah, we, we went last year to New York and saw three plays. We saw uh, Sweeney Todd. 
We saw the revival of Some Like It Hot. Mm -hmm. And then we saw The Play That Goes Wrong. Mm. Oh, my God, is that funny. If you get a chance to go see that, go there. Cool. We had dinner at Birdland, which is a jazz club. Yep. Man, oh, man. We get to see the Museum of Broadway. I think that's what it's called. But they go in, they show you the whole history of Broadway and how the theaters came yep. about. And Man, they got scripts, original scripts with the author's handwriting on them and notes that they made Neat. as they went along. It, you would love it. You That's would love cool. It. That's really cool. Nice well, it's so important, whether it's music, theater, the arts, to um, support these types of venues and keep live entertainment Absolutely. alive, right? It's so easy yeah. in the world of the smart zone phone, and I do it too, to do a deep dive on TikTok or the yeah. news or however it's delivered these days, and that is wonderful in so many important ways, but it's isolating in so many important ways too. Absolutely. And so getting to Lincoln, getting to New York City to see these shows that we are talking about in moments like these is just um, so so great to well, do. Well, theater in New Hampshire is crazy. Right now, I think Scott Bakula, mm -hmm. you know him? From, no, I don't know anything. Oh, my God. He's from what show is it? Um, it's on the top of my Quantum head. Leap. Thank you, sir. Thank goodness you're here. And he's playing. They're doing uh, Men of La Mancha over in Peterborough, oh. I believe. <laughs> I know. They bring in the big names like that. Theater in New Hampshire, I keep hammering, and I, I, I hope... A lot of the listeners take me up on it. Get out. Go see theater in New Hampshire. And Peterborough is an interesting, neat New England enclave, oh, too. Yeah, you know, we have a there. newer office there. My firm, Shaheen and Gordon, where I'm proud to practice law, has an office in Peterborough. And they're doing a wonderful job serving that community in lots of ways. It's such an interesting town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You wouldn't think. I mean, the theater's like tucked away in a... You know, you got to be going there to get there. Well, and know? I love to hear how you describe an eclectic audience, right? Like delivering that type of entertainment to all sorts of souls is important. It reminds me, we'll talk more after the break there about you go. an eclectic group of people Why I've been spending some time with here. lately right here in Concord uh, and Pentecost. Yes, sir. Lucky listening. We are halfway through. My gosh, you are listening to NH Unscripted. I am your host with the jello all over his face, Ray Dudley, 1450 AM, 103.9 FM in Concord is where you'll find us, 101.9 FM in Manchester for the beautiful souls down there. Jim Rosenberg is in the house. We're halfway through. My gosh, I still have questions for him. We will be right Your everyday people. That means I am your Sly and the Family Stone like host, Ray Dudley. You are listening to NH Unscripted on your transistor radios. That's 1450 AM, 103.9 FM, 101.9 FM for the folks in Manchester. And our URL, which I have forgotten to give out the past two segments, is nhtalkradio.com. Tell you a little bit more about what's happening out there in a moment. But on with the show. Sir, did you summer abroad this year? What do you mean, summer? Like vacation? Yes, sir. Is well, exactly uh, what so I'm I at. took a series of vacations. Um, um, never a huge vacation. We did one week away. We, we went to Maine twice this summer, and yep. as many places as we go, or as extravagant as, as, uh, uh, as something we might find to do, we return time and again to family vacations on the beach in Maine. And what we find with huh. our daughter, who's now 21 years old, is that throughout her childhood, uh, incorporating her friends or our family has just been great and, yeah. and simple as everything and it's hard to beat um, just kind of staking a claim on a beach somewhere so we went up in June for a week in Saco, Maine just south of Old Orchard Beach. We rented a place in a community called Kinney Shores and that is just a beautiful stretch of sand that runs south of Old Orchard and Old Orchard is kind of fry dough fun but actually that beach as you meander south gets really sleepy and neat and um, wow. that's a great place. And there's well, I thought you went over to Copenhagen or something. I 
did, on. Dev. We not talked about that? Well, we talked about your previous oh, trip. Oh, we did to Amsterdam. So we with the did. with the same groups, we did a reunion tour uh-huh. with with uh, uh, my friends Doug Mark, Pat Lyons, and Kirk McGonigal, the exact same foursome that, that took um, Amsterdam by storm the Memorial Day prior. This past Memorial Day, we were fortunate to go to Copenhagen mm-hmm. and rented an Airbnb. In Amsterdam, we found an Airbnb, which was a boat on one of the canals right really? in town. That wasn't so in Copenhagen. We were on a sixth floor walk up. Oh. And so we're there um, having fun, um, occasionally having a drink, but riding our cycles in a sober state, of course, <laughs> all over that great town. And of when course. we were done with our day's travels, then we had to confront what was our own personal Everest by climbing up oh these six God. flight of stairs to a beautiful loft in what was Wait, are you saying they don't have an elevator or anything? They did not have an elevator. It was a great place, really cool place that exposed beams and a contemporary look and beautiful kitchen appliances and a lanai where we could drink our tea outside and get some fresh air. But you know what was weird and we didn't know this ahead of time? And I swear this had this has no reflection on the uh, health and quality of our souls. Clearly the people who own the lofts were Satan worshippers. <laughs> All of the artwork was this satanic artwork. And as we kind of took a deeper dive, evaluating piece after piece, we were really what? wondering like how marketable this place might be. It was a great um, There was nothing on the Airbnb us. side. Nothing. <laughs> it, it, I'm like, are we going to be okay? I feel like we need to cleanse our souls when we return to the States. A little States, heads up would but be nice. But we survived it, it. The other intriguing thing about it is there was a massive hard rock vinyl collection in this place. And so we would conclude our evenings by bringing it home, spinning a record. Our friend Doug Mark, who is a local kid, he his folks own Caring Gifts on Main Street in Concord. Just wonderful people. Oh. Donna and Jerry Mark, you may know them. Anyone who's ever bought a gift basket in this town has run into that yeah. a wonderful family one way or the other. Doug is kind of our, uh, uh, our musical, spiritual guide and would identify a record to play at the end of the night and bring us home that way. But what an amazing trip. And we actually rode our bikes to a series of wood sculptures, various animals and gargoyles created by an uh, artist in Copenhagen who actually also has built some of these neat wood s- sculptures, I think, at the Botanical Gardens in Maine. I Are they have like done with wrong. chainsaw, that kind of one? Um, that you e- see? They're not done with chainsaw. It's true carpentry, but they're these giants, and they're in unique and beautiful spots in the outskirts of Copenhagen, and we rode our bike to each of them doing kind of, I think, about a 30-mile loop and managing our battery strength because we, of course, need the power of our pedal pedal list to get us through yeah, an adventure yeah, like yeah. that. But it was a neat way to take in some city and uh, landscape. Why Copenhagen? Um, well, so we were identifying places where that were biking friendly in town. Got you. Um, there's something neat about nor- Northern Europe in that um, early part of spring. The sun comes out and stays out late, and that gives you all in the community there a burst of energy. Um, it's clean and safe and easy to navigate. Navigate. There's no the problem nice. with English. Lovely people. Yep. We saw a great soccer game there. The Copenhagen Lions, I believe, played, and it ended up being an important game in the energy and adoration of fans for their soccer clubs is intense and wonderful. I it was a packed it. stadium in a consequential game that they ended up tying, and that also was a neat way to take in some local culture and atmosphere. That was absolutely great. I yeah. mean, really, really How great trip. there for a week? No, we only go for a few nights, so I think we were there for four nights. It's a surgical strike. I mean, that's the other thing night neat about that part of Europe from Boston. You can get there flying kind of a red eye. You get on at night, you you try to sleep, which rarely happens, and show up in the morning. On that trip, we connected through Reykjavik, but on the next one, we're going direct. I'm going to go for a few nights to Amsterdam with a friend. One of these guys, Pat, has a business trip coming up and invited us to tag along, and I am going, and that time I'm only going for three nights. So Jeez. it's a quick rip out and back, kind of like going to Vegas, which is another trip I did this summer. What? So this you summer, an animal. I celebrated, I hate to say this because I loathe birthdays and repeating <laughs> it on air is something I don't really wish to do, but it explains part of our journey.
journey. But I turn 50 this summer. My wife um, will turn 50 in another week. And so together we celebrate this summer our 50th birthdays. We have been blissfully married for 25 years now. How about and, the other five? Um, yes, I'm <laughs> kidding. But I'm bump. I'm here all week, folks. You can, we'll catch up with her. I mean, if she were a guest here, she'd probably get you give you a real window into the true scoop. But my daughter, my glorious daughter, also turned 21 in April. Her boyfriend, Neil Shea of Beacon Street in Concord, he he also uh, turned 21. So together, to celebrate all of these milestones, we planned a weekend trip to Las Vegas in the dead of summer where it was 108 degrees, but had a great time at the Cosmopolitan. We um, rented a, a cabana one day at the pool. What? And what a way to roll what? being served in uh, fine fashion by the so wonderful jealous. people at the Cosmopolitan. And we went to a couple of different great restaurants, but one highlight, um, Neil, our friend and our daughter's boyfriend, is a skier. He goes to Northeastern University where he competes in the club ski team. And so where it was his birthday, literally, as we were flying out there, we tried to do something neat for him. And there's this secret bar in the Cosmopolitan, which has no windows, a small cavern, kind of like your studio. And when you go into it, and they manage the number of people in there, it is set up like an opera ski bar. Like if you're going to... Like um, a, sl- a speakeasy, but that kind of. But I mean, it's got the vibe that you're at a ski mountain, you're done with the slopes, and you've walked into yeah. their um, bar in the lodge in order to have a beer. They've set it up to look just like that, wow. and it, it, it did a very good job bringing some sort of desert authenticity to their slopeside ski lounge. We found this place, and it's kind of secret, obviously not that secret. Right. And all that exists on the door to it is just one small teeny skier medallion or emblem and you walk in and my daughter and Neil's eyes uh, opened up as they were surprised to see what we found there a true opera ski bar as if you just so got off the you, slopes at Stowe right in the right what in the would desert. you say determines that 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 ambiance are they like like skis hanging from the walls or a yeah. fire going in the fireplace? Yes, all what? of the above. Really? Yeah, all of the above. Yeah, They have a fire going in the they fireplace? They do. It's a faux fire, but yeah, yeah, they've got a big fireplace and a fire going and you know heavy wood and ski maps of a bunch of uh, local and west um, ski areas and all the ski trail signs that you might see. Man. And they did a very good... People were celebrating by doing shot skis. Do you know what a shot ski I is? I do not. Okay, so those in the skiing world uh, will be getting giggling and sneering, making fun of what I'm saying, but it's a, a old ski that yeah. they put a, some holes in for shot glasses and yes. together along with three, four, five of your friends. So it's like a flight you line of up, It's like a what? flight of shot, glass, shot glasses, but you stand shoulder to shoulder with your brothers and sisters after getting done with the slopes. You do a shot ski and everyone simultaneously pulls up that ski and drinks their shot at the same time. That's crazy. And they were, yeah, they were uh, peddling those too, but they all had they shirts that said Ski Vegas, you know, obviously a uh, Joke, given their desert environment, right, right. contrasted with the winter winter climate where you'd ski. Did they keep it really cold so that you were? It was. It felt? was. It was nice and warm, and the cocktails were amazing, and and you know it was all you know priced accordingly, of course. Yeah, but of course. Um, it was uh, it was a treat among many treats out there, um, where you know Las Vegas is like an adult play park, right? Yeah, where yeah. they've now um, cornered the market on fine food and great yeah. dining. We also where we were, you know, really out there as couples, just one couple was 21 and the other was 50, we went to the Marquee Club, a legit club right in the Cosmopolitan with a DJ and everything. And there's no doubt that my wife Shannon and I were 20 years the senior of any other customer there for <laughs> sure. We got it done, though. Tell me you danced. Did you? Oh, yeah. I always Under the dance, disco man. ball? I always <laughs> dance. I'm nimble and quick, oh. gifted on the dance floor. Oh, my mind hurts from that. You are listening to NH Unscripted. I am your host, Ray Dudley. You are listening to us at 1450 AM, 103.9 FM, and Concord on your transistor radios, 101.9 FM for the gorgeous souls of Manchester. NHStockRadio.com is our URL because we're cool. Jim Rosenberg's in the house, and he's cracking me up. We will be right back. Ooh, 
Mother of God, I love my job. You are listening to NH Unscripted, where we will lay a little loving on you, baby. I'm your Robin McNamara-like host, Ray Dudley. And we are coming to you from the fantasy island-like digs of the WKXL Studios in Concord. On your transistor radio or your Sony Walkman, you will find us at 1450 AM, 103.9 FM. Those are Concord-based, 101.9 FM, for the beautiful people in Manchester. And out at our URL, nhtalkradio.com, you will find a button to listen to this show live, which happens to come every Wednesday and Friday morning at 9 a.m. Or you can go find archives of this show and all of the other great programs that take place here. They're all archived out there. You can spend hours and hours and hours You know, just get your little cat out and just sit there listening with your teacup and laughing and chuckling and enjoying everything that we do here. Anyway, that's what's happening at NHTalkRadio.com. Mr. Rosenberg is in the house. Sir, let's let's strike out on pickleball for a second. Yeah, and I know, I know, I've I've thrust this topic on you, but you I've just have been indeed. taken by it. I mean, two weekends ago, I had two friends of mine, Kirk McGonigal and Brian Quirk. Do you yep. know them? No, they're your travel buddies. They're, do, they are travel buddies in different directions. Brian Quirk is a partner of mine, a lawyer at Shaheen and Gordon. A wonderful Why is he lawyer. not ever in here talking? Oh, we got to get him in here. Heck, we do. Yeah, yes. I think that you could pester him with some uh, with some questions. Bring that boy he'd, in he'd, here. He'd step right into the breach and absorb anything you've got to ask him. All right. My friend Kirk McGonigal and I graduated proudly together from Concord High in 1992. We played um, basketball. He played more than I did, but we both participated on the team. And uh, a dear friend to this day, um, those guys have been playing a little pickleball along with their wives, Fiona and Kristen. And they invited me out to play a couple weekends ago and brought me to Rolf Park in Pennacook, which is where I've coached softball games that my daughter participated in and myself played youth soccer. It's a great field complex. And what I hadn't realized is our city, who doesn't always get everything right, has out there repurposing a couple of the tennis courts to really die in, dial in some beautiful pickleball courts. And I didn't know what I was into, although I got a great workout doing it, but I borrowed one of their paddles and uh, proud of my ping pong game. I mean, yeah. I grew up in basements in the area and fraternity houses in college, perfecting a ping pong game, which I was pleased to see pivoted and translated well and applied to the sport of pickleball. And I was able to participate at some meaningful level, despite the fact that I was totally new to it. But what was interesting out there is we ran into a really wide range of people, young people. There was this young man named Garv there who is all but 12 years old and goes to oh, uh, middle school in the Merrimack Valley District. And we only got to know him because he's an exceptional pickleball player. He was actually there last night and teamed up with Garv to be kings of the court for a little while. There was another woman there named Hope, and I don't know these people at all other than to say I ran into them, both young people. On the other end of it, um, uh, I ran in when we were first out there to the great Paul Zaffini. Do you know Paul? I do not. Coach Z, I ran into him first coaching um, softball where he is a bit of a hitting guru and is really effective teaching and explaining hitting concepts to softball players near and far. He was famous for owning the Sal's Pizza location on Store Street. Oh, He's I now retired Sal's. from that gig and has just focused, it appears, on pickleball. And he, when we went up there uh, for my first time, gave us a few pointers. And what's cool about the community of pickleball players in our area, and I suspect this is everywhere, they're rotating in to play with one another. There's nothing exclusive or snooty or country club in the vibe. And I think that, you know, tennis and golf, sports I love and that we all do, sometimes suffer from this snooty kind of attitude. And I think what pickleball has brought to these courts is a come one, come all um, willingness to try. And and it also struck me that that people of different age, people of different weights, people of different athleticism were out there in force playing with one another, blending in with one another. And in a time where I don't think we're fully utilizing our public spaces all that well, yep, yep. in a time where, as we were mentioning earlier here in your broadcast, I think people can get a little bit isolated on their own. Correct. I was mesmerized to see the throngs of locals out there of all strengths. Stripes, picking up, playing, and doing it together, talking and socializing along the way. I was, lo- I've only done it three times, okay? And so I don't want to overstate it. Um, it appears there's a game there. There's also a game at the tennis courts at Beaver Meadow, next to Beaver Meadow School. Really? And next to Beaver Meadow Golf Course. Those are two places where I've observed local 
games picking up, it appears that the local pickleball players have an app or some other means of communication so that they know where there are and where the equipment's at and things of that sort. Um, and I think that that way they also have access to some lock boxes at some of the courts so that they can set oh. up nets where they don't have them. But okay. at Rolf Park, they've got permanent nets, which are an amazing addition to that place. Stop the presses. For people who don't know what pickleball is, explain a little bit. It it you said they converted tennis courts. Yeah. So one tennis court equals two pickleball por- it courts. It does. Yeah. And so you take one side of a tennis court, you split it with a smaller lower net. Okay. You're playing with a racket, so it's an outdoor sport or indoor sport. It's like miniature tennis. It's a step up from ping pong and a step down from tennis. So there's less dramatic movement as you would have in tennis. The, I'm here to tell you plenty of exercise. Okay. Because I was huffing and puffing for sure and dripping with sweat as we played. Um, the racket racket is smaller than a tennis racket and is firm. It doesn't have um, uh, you know, the webbing so of a, a solid... tennis record. Solid, solid racket. The ball is bigger than a ping pong ball, but not, not the material of a tennis ball. It's more like a really sturdy, firm wiffle ball. Okay. So that means that the ball, I think, uh, travels a little at lesser rate is than it, it would. Is it perforated? It is perforated okay. as a wiffle ball would be. Yeah. Okay. And so you dink it back and forth. Yeah. And there's some unique rules I had to pick up along the way, but it's great exercise. It's very playable. For someone like me, I was able to walk. Now, granted, I played a lot of ping pong just for fun in my past. And I think that that did help me make a quick pivot to being able to play. Yeah. And people there were quick with some basic tips and guidance. And that all it took to get out there and play and even win a few games. So could so, this be a future Olympic sport? Like break dancing, which I saw this past summer. I thought the break dancing was amazing. And I loved it. There were so many great stories about the Olympics we could talk about. That would have been a great topic. <laughs> <laughs> so many good stories about this Olympics. You like, know why I brought up break dancing. The, the, the break dancing. Well, uh, uh, that one I, woman. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, in this great stories, the Turkish shooter. Did you hear about that guy? I love that guy. The pole vaulter. How about that? Was there a Japanese woman a shooter who was like cold hearted, man? Oh, I missed she that. She had all the uh, the latest equipment. She looked yeah. like the RoboCop. Yeah. I mean, cold, steel hearted nerves. I mean, she didn't budge. Yeah. She had to be like four foot five and just. Well, well, the Turkish shooter was an interesting story too. Like they had some Turkish guy in the, Wasn't he the guy target like shooting team. The assassin. And yes, he yeah. did. And and this guy falls ill, and so they know that there's a businessman who happens to be a good shot from Turkey in Paris there, and they try to recruit him. And initially, apparently, wait, I didn't know this told, story. Yeah, he says no because he's got a business lunch and goes there, and his friends at lunch are like, "You have to go." And he's older. He's got gray hair, and all the other athletes out there for target shooting walk out with their tactical earmuffs in there. Big yes. glasses. I didn't know this was the and, backstory to that guy. Yeah, and oh. he's got these little these little earplugs you'd wear yeah. on a plane or to bed or something, and he stands out there and comfortably puts one hand in his pocket where he then takes away the yes. silver medal. And I think someone even said he like wiped his fingerprints off the gun when he was done. That pipe might, might be an exaggeration Most of us for assassins purposes do of the that. story, but really intriguing that this guy comes out of nowhere and takes it was a silver amazing medal, to watch. medal that from was a bunch of kids. That cold-hearted, boy. Yeah. That you, I can't even imagine. You're in the Olympics, yeah. and you're not. He didn't flinch. That man did no, not budge. No, he, he he'd been there before and done that successfully. Yes. Yeah. Maybe not at the Olympics. Yeah, it was intriguing. <laughs> but in any event, I mean, I want to send a shout out to uh, Brian and Fiona Quirk, Kristen and Kirk McG- McGonigal for introducing me to the game of pickleball and this thriving community of local players from all walks that are out there together having fun. Are they have leagues? Uh, I'm sure there are. And I think that pickleball may be an Olympic sport. What? I don't know if it is or isn't, but on my TikTok, breakdancing is. On my TikTok, I've been seeing some highlights, and it is something. Breakdancing is. Did you like that? <laughs> I I loved no, it. No, I did not. I love loved it. it. <laughs> <laughs> it was so great. It reminded me of when breakdancing hit. I was in elementary, <laughs> middle school time, and friends of mine would bring large cardboard boxes that they'd gotten from home and turn into breakdancing mats, and yeah. then would compete against one another on the playgrounds in Concord and Bow. Not a fan. I mean, not it was a fan. it was a trend at the time, and I hadn't thought about it since. And man, it came back. I'll tell you what, though, when you do when you do watch them, I'm not a fan of it but the athleticism of some of those people yeah holy 
mother. Yeah. Oh, that is unbelievable. Yeah, it was good. Woo, you got to have some back muscles, baby. Yeah. I, you, woo, I can't believe it. Yeah. I uh-huh. thought that it was super entertaining, and Paris is a great venue for it. I felt terribly for one of our gymnasts who had her bronze medal taken from her yeah. based on a scoring dispute, though yeah. it sounds like they were right. Really? Are we done? Oh, man. Oh. So much more to say and do. Yeah. Next time. Jim. Yeah. Yeah. Ask me back. I'd be glad to come. Oh, mama. He said the magic words. You are listening to. Inviting myself as always. Of course. Of course. Great segue. NH Unscripted. I am your ever happy to be on a bed host, Ray Dudley. We are coming to you from the Green Acres like studios of the WKXL studios in Concord. 1450 AM, 103.9 FM. That's in Concord on your Walkman, 101.9 FM in Manchester for the beautiful souls. NHTalkRadio.com is our URL. Mr. Rosenberg, thank you once Thank again. you. It's a pleasure, truly. Oh, Great always. to see you. Good luck with your show. Enjoy. Oh, thanks, man. Enjoy New York. That's it. See you on the next one.